family. Good evening, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are, are where you are in the world. Good evening or good afternoon or even good morning. All right. If you are just tuning in to the show tonight, we are just barely getting started. Actually, haven't really officially started, but go ahead and um, share this broadcast now, like it, um, or put it in your archives to watch later. Um, I'm just going to release a word that has different nuggets in it that the Lord um, gave into my spirit um, for you to grab hold of. Okay, great. I see my messages coming through. And um, so I'm excited about it. So I'm going to give it about 30 seconds for a few more people to join our broadcast tonight. Again, this is the triumphant show. Um, gosh, it has been a fast moving year. It has been an awesome year. Glory be to God. So much has happened. Um, but what I love about life is that God is still speaking. God is still showing forth his glory. He's still showing that he's still in charge. And uh, I'm just so excited that he's still speaking to give us direction, to give us focus. So that way we are in line with his will. So I'm really happy about that. Listen, tonight is um, really a laid back night um, that I have to share with you what the Lord was given to me um, over the last couple of days. And I'm looking forward to um the month of March, I have some great guests that are coming on um, in the month of March. So you do want to still stay connected with me here on Facebook, on Instagram, um, on Twitter, and also on my Sharita Lovelace Ministries page. Um, and also, as soon as I can get a couple more things done on my YouTube channel. So I'm excited about that as well. Um, also, keep in mind that we also broadcast this show on Vision TV. Um, and make sure that you click the right Vision TV because we, we want to make sure that um, the one that is showing the kingdom um, broadcast is the one that you are following. Um, very popular name, but at the same time, the ministry is great. Um, right now, a little bit over 17,000, previously a little bit over 200,000, but um, the producers there are working on some awesome things for that broadcast that is going to expand even more and um, praise God that it continues to reach the nations. Um, also, um, a strong shout out to um, the Triumphant Radio located in the UK and also in Nigeria, uh, where my show will be broadcast um, on a regular basis. Um, through that platform. So we're excited about the Lord expanding um, this show and my ministry and um, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about some other things that are down the line, um, down the pipe. So with that being said, um, don't forget if you wanna join the list of guests that are in place for 2020, I do have more slots available. So feel free to send me an email at Sharita Lovelace. Um, at gmail.com, or you can do Sharita Lovelace Ministries at gmail.com, or you can send, send me a um, instant message, and we'll go from there. I'm pretty easy, pretty laid back when it comes to that, um, but we would love to hear your triumphant story, or hear about your gift, or see what God is doing in your life to bless somebody else, or if you just want to come on with me and prophesy, preach, and pray, we can do that too. Just let me know, and we'll fit you in to one of these Monday nights at 8 o'clock. So glory be to God, and these broadcasts again are played on both stations that I just mentioned um, across the globe. So um, I'm just excited that God's voice gets to get heard by other people that just want a word, that need refreshing, or just need to know that they're not alone in the things that they go through in their life. So glory to God for Vision TV and for the Triumphant Radio located in the UK, Nigeria, and other locations. And more to come. Again, more to come. So again, um, share, follow, and like this broadcast. But listen, so tonight I have um, some nuggets that are going to go in between what I'm going to share. So, so do your best to stay with me. If you have to get paper and pen, get paper and pen. Um, but I want to release this. And this word that the Lord was giving me, some of it we know, but God just gave me some other nuggets to connect to it, just to keep us reminded as we are marching into the month of March. And if you are feeling like things have not fully been fulfilled in your life so far since the beginning of the year, or if you feel that you've been experiencing some warfare or something's not right, or you're wondering why something hasn't manifested itself, um, this word is for you tonight. 
for you just to be reminded and to be refreshed or to receive revelation um, of what God wants to show and share with you about whatever he's saying in your particular circumstance tonight. Because I'm going to tell you, he spoke to me and um, he even showed me some things in a, in a vision that I had a few days ago that I had to share with my pastor and some other spiritual um, colleagues um, that what God was doing and what was so key is, is what I'm sharing with us tonight. And it was just a reminder, but it's stuff we know. So hear me out, stay with me for this. And I'm going to try not to be long, but I want you to get all the different nuggets that the Lord gave me with this scripture. You already know, but I have some more that's coming, um, but I want to feed your spirit today, edify you so you can just be the best you that God called you to be and that you will have nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, wherever you're forgetting something or you need refreshing. I pray that tonight God gives it to you and that he reminds you who you are and that you will not get off of your journey into being the best you that you can be to live a truly triumphant life. Remember, part of the slogan of this show is the place where victory repeats itself. That means that I don't care what has gone on in your life. I don't care what they thought you looked like before. Who you are now is the victory, is the victory that God wants to show off. He wants to show off that you're still here that you're still victorious, that you still have great things that are gonna be happening in your life, and that he's going to still use you to bless others around you, no matter what capacity that you're in, no matter um, whether you're in ministry, whether it's in corporate America, whether it's in media, whatever it is, God still wants to use you. He wants to sharpen us too, because sometimes we'll get back a little bit or we'll slack us some things, but God wants to speak to us tonight, so I'm excited. So he was giving me over the weekend, Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form or void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. We have heard that scripture a thousand times, and we've probably heard different variations of how it spoke of what went on. But for whatever reason, God had this scripture illuminate for us tonight. And he brought out some other things in this. So stay with me and hear this. So first of all, when it talks about the spirit of God moving, we know in this um, in this word spirit, in the Hebrew, it's recognized as Ruach Elohim, which means breath, wind, um, the spirit. The Elohim is the God of Israel. So the wind of God came upon something, the, the breath of God, the spirit, it moved on something. So it's the Ruach that began in the beginning. It was the breath of God that started things. It, it was it was something that came and it began to hover. Some versions of scripture said that it moved. It began to do something. And when I think about dance and movement, I said, you know what? God started praise dance. He started liturgical dance because he moved on the face of the waters. And that's the beginning of the word that we have in the in, in, in our Bible. And so it talks about hovering. And when I think about hovering, I think about how, you know, you go out to dinner with people and let's say you're, you you all order food to eat and you're waiting for your food to come and somebody got to go make a phone call or someone has to go to the restroom and so you have to wait. So your food is sitting there and you're just anxiously waiting and you're kind of almost hovering over waiting for an action or something to take place. You know what? It makes me think about the spirit of God, how when he saw something or, or, or how he was how he came into that place of the waters, how he was ready to activate life, how he was ready to breathe in who he is to make a change, to make something happen. And after the spirit of God came and hovered over there, it says later in that scripture, a line or two down, that God spoke, let there be light. He spoke, let there be light. He said, let there be light. And guess what? There was light. There was nothing in between about that. There was light. Now stay with me, okay? So we're talking about an experience in the beginning. We're talking about creation. We're talking about a spirit that hovered and God spoke and something happened. And what reminded me a little bit is when we think about a spirit hovering over something, if you have a circumstance you're dealing with today or you know someone that has a circumstance you're dealing with today, what Spirit is hovering over that circumstance. Not only do you need to find out what spirit is hovering over that circumstance, what then is being spoken over it that could possibly bring it to life? 
And I don't mean life always good. It could be life in another way that's detrimental to lives or your life or the situation. And so when we think about in the beginning, how God even began there at that point, making a master plan and showing us how without the spirit of God moving in something, there truly can't be light. There can be something that manifests when a spirit hovers over something and somebody speaks something. But that's not the spirit of God I'm talking about that speaks um, that's part of the Trinity that speaks um, the power that he is, that breathes, that rule of breath in something that, to bring it to life and light. And so God was already showing us the blueprint that when there is a transgression or a situation going on, I'm bringing a revelation out of this. There's more to it. Oh, wait a minute. When there's something going on and you begin to recognize it, that you call forth the spirit of God, because that's the only spirit that can breathe new life on that circumstance. Not only that, what you say about that circumstance brings life. That's the, that's the first thing we see in the beginning of the creation. God, God was serious about that creation, which is why it is so important that we understand and we hear all the time that there's power in the tongue. There's death and life that we speak in the tongue. So when a spirit hovers over your circumstance, when you think about it, what could manifest if it's not the spirit of God? If you're speaking something over your circumstance or situation that is not the spirit of God and something else, what could manifest? Or is there something already manifest? It manifested in a situation you know of or your situation. And now you have to look back and wonder what spirit did I allow to hover over this situation and manifest this drama? Because when the spirit of God is breathed and spoken in a place of darkness, light has to come. It manifests. It brings itself. So when, when the spirit of God descends on us, it's like it, his presence lights up. It's the presence of God. Stay with me now. We're getting somewhere. So a spirit descending on your circumstance brings light. Just like the Lord said, let there be light. When you have a situation going on and you see it's getting out of array, some of you need to just say, let there be light. Because there's something so powerful about light. There's something so amazing about light. And there's something so, so intriguing about how the very thing that we are shown in the beginning of the word of God, how we still somewhat take for granted when circumstances come our way. When is the last time you got into an altercation and did you just stop and said, ah, nope, spirit of God, nope, let there be light. And then the whole, the presence of God comes on in, brings light, changes and transforms that situation. And when that happens, God says, and it was good. Because everything God does, he does it well and he does it good. But something happens when light comes in. When you are in a place and you bring light into a dark place or a dark circumstance, something happens. Either others around you, let's say if you're in, in a, a job situation, relationship, organization, whatever it is, others will either come in agreement with you because of the light, the spirit that you carry, or they will fight you, they will flee from you, or they will imitate you, which is really being a fake of a spirit. Because we know the enemy, he, he can come, we think it's God, or we think it's a, 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 the Holy Spirit, and it's really some other kind of spirit. But in this passage, it's talking about the spirit of God. And so when, when light begins to descend on something, the spirit of God, things happen, things change. There are people that are going through things right now since the beginning of this year or things that may have happened or things that have brought you from a high to a low. And tonight is your night to begin to speak light into it and recognize and realize what's in you that can be spoken off your lips that can manifest. Because God called you into position to do some great things. And that means that if his word is, is in you, and lights up, and you begin to speak it, things manifest. We say, well, how, how do I bring light? Where's the word? How do I bring light? Pray. 
How do I bring light? Continue to feed and edify yourself with the word of God and it'll come to pass. I'm confused about this. How do I start this? What do I do? How do I worship? How do I change the situation? How do I, how do I, how do I, how do I? I? Let there be light. And the way the light illuminates and intensifies in you is based off of how much time and effort that you are uh, you are embracing the spirit of God, that you are embracing in the word of God. That there is there are things that we neglect to put the word of God on, and they stay in our situation for weeks, months, or even years at a time. And see, what is so powerful is that you're not operating as yourself. Matter of fact, many of us are not even qualified to be on some of the platforms that we are on. It's not that we're qualified to do it, but our light is. Your light is qualified to break chains. Your light is qualified to break yokes. Your light is qualified to speak. And it is so, thus says the Lord. That's what qualifies you. The light and the God of you qualifies you to break chains. It qualifies you to do those things you thought you couldn't do. It qualifies you to put things in perspective in order to bring clarity. The light qualifies you to do things you thought you had to go and, and, and spend 10 years at you know seminary or, or somewhere. The light qualifies you for it. Now, I'm not knocking school, seminary, or anything. Hello. All right. Or anything like that for myself and, and for others or whatever, because that sharpening that skill, that deepening we all need. My point is, is that there are things that God has given us already that we can even start to use until God begins to grow it and strengthen it. And that's the light in you. Have a situation with your spouse or your children, speak the light, the life in them. Have you said, let there be light. Let there be light on the sickness. Let there be light on on the grading process, you know, we, we, we saw today in the media an extensive coverage of um, a famous basketball player and his daughter that passed away. We've seen that in the media. We've seen um, in our own personal lives, including myself, someone passing away uh, recently. But we have to keep speaking light into those situations because, you know, when there's no light, it's like the, it's like there's no electricity. There's no power. There's no apparatus apparatus to guide us. It's like when you're in the midst of a storm and you don't remember the light in you, the power in you, and to speak and let it be so, then you're just walking around blinded. Or you may stay in a storm longer than God intended because you forgot the power and the light within you. And so when you have no light, it's like having no electricity. It's like moving around aimlessly. But when we have that inside of us, it allows us to see. It allows us not just to see in the natural, but to see in the spirit. The light allows us to see in the spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, how he operates in us. And when he gives us wisdom and we pray for wisdom, it allows us to see beyond our natural eye. It allows us to see in that spiritual place. It allows us to understand things better. It allows us to know uh, what type of strategy or movement we need to make when we carry the light in us. And so sometimes we have to just go ahead and say, you know what? Let me command that there be light in this situation. Let me command that light is going to saturate in this place, you know? So when, you're, when your spiritual source is the Holy Spirit that gives light into life, then your dependence on things change. So when I know that that light is in me and, and, I, and when I understand that because of the light in me that was spoken at the beginning of time and I know when I can speak a thing and I know that it, it will manifest, that means that I'm dependent on the light in me, the power of the Holy Spirit in me, the presence of God in me and not man. I'm not dependent on how man does things. I'm not dependent on, you know, who, who comes to this event, who's not. I'm not dependent on, on who's there, who's not, or, or how this is handled or anything. I'm dependent on what God has placed in me and what he said to do in the beginning of time. It's like he laid out the blueprint for us to show us. He gave us instructions to do territory, multiply. And he did all of this before he started doing the sun, the moon, and the stars. What you say? Light is so important 
that it came before all that other stuff came that you read in Genesis. That's how powerful light the presence of God is. His word, his breath, his ruach, ruach Elohim. That's how powerful it is because that was the beginning. And as you travel through this year and you're getting to the end of February and you're beginning a new month in a few days, you want to march into that place if you have to go back to the beginning in your life, in your thought process and the things you've done to remember in the beginning, there was light and light leads the way. Light, light makes change. God is the author and the finisher of light. He is the father of light. So when we talk about, I made a little joke with some people and I said, you know, there's a festival of light. But being in a festival of lights, God was showing me this vision where everybody in this room was lit. There was all these little lights in this room. But nobody wanted to separate to go into the place of darkness. Nobody wanted to come from their place of comfort zone to go and meet the needs of those that are lost. Nobody wanted to detach themselves and go into the place of the least, the less, and the lost to show the dark what light looks like. There are some people in this world that don't even know what light, the presence of God, the glory of God, the spirit of God looks like, feels like, acts like. They have no idea because we want to stay in the festival of light, the comfort of light. We want to stay in this place. God said, I'm the father of light. I want to pull out one of you like I'm pulling out a match from a matchbox and place you somewhere so you can be light in the midst of somebody's storm. So you can be light in the midst of somebody's trauma. So you can show somebody a brighter picture, a bigger day. The word of God says, weeping may endure for a night, darkness, but joy comes in the morning, day, light. So some people need to know what that looks like. Some people need a helping hand to say, show me the light. Help me understand the light. Let me see how it's demonstrated. I want to be in the presence of God. I want my situation changed. How do I destroy the yokes? How do I keep this cycle from cycling this stuff over and over again? How do I make that change? And God is saying, sister, brother, you're the light. So be the light. It's not a season where you dim your light. It's a season where you shine bright. You can't dim your light. You can't stay in that little cluster, that comfort zone where everybody light, everybody doing good. And there's all this darkness around. We need supposed to break apart and go where there's a need. And go where there's a need. Because at the end of the day, when light comes, God's going to say, and it was good. God's going to say, and it is finished. God's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. God is going to say, thank you for doing what you do. My hand was on you the whole time. My eye stayed on you the whole time. I had angels surrounding you the whole time. I had a fiery hedge of protection that surrounded you and your family the whole time because you were obedient to understand and hear me because you carried the spirit of God in you. And that's the light. Jesus, the light of the world, and we're walking in, in, in who he is and we're demonstrating that, that means that we are to be the light, the salt of the earth. That's our responsibility. Let me tell you something. Darkness cannot hold its position when light comes around. You ever notice how people get uncomfortable when you come around? It's not always because they don't like you. It's because there's a light in you. It's because there's something about you that carries the presence of God or something that has been so in depth and deep that they have not experienced before. You can be in church for 50 years, 40 years, for 20 years. You can be on platforms, the north, the south, the east, and the west. But if the light of God is not in you, when it comes around your way, you will not recognize it unless you have been in the presence of God. Unless you have divided your time to say, I'm going to go seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness because my assignment is to go and reach these people in the dark and I want to carry the light and I don't want my light dim. I want it bright. That's not being conceited. That's following the will of God. That is being a disciple to go out to make more disciples. That's our assignment. See, darkness cannot hold its position when the light is around. People may walk away from you. They may look at you crazy. They may say some things. It's probably because they don't really understand your assignment as a light for the world, as a light unto the Gentiles. When you understand your assignment, when you understand that you are called to go into places and into trenches that some people really don't want to go to or are too uncomfortable because they don't rely uh, on the power and the will and the and, and the protection of God, 
when you're called to do that, that it might feel uncomfortable to other people. But when you know your assignment, you keep doing it because you know it's the right thing to do. Darkness can't hold up in light. When you keep your head up and you walk with the light of the Lord, when you walk with the fruit of the spirit, when you walk knowing that your light is not going to dim, it's going to shine, darkness will not hold up. Be ye not afraid, sisters and brothers. Be not afraid. Because as you go forth, God has got you. He's got his hand upon you. When you know your assignment, you know where you're sent to go to be the light in the midst of the darkness. You'll carry the spirit of God. And then when you get there, the way you're activating the light in a dark place is that you're speaking. In the name of Jesus, the gates of hell shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus, the blood cover and keep. In the name of Jesus, Satan cannot come near me. In the name of Jesus, sickness is healed. In the name of Jesus, no more disease. In the name of Jesus, I declare joy. In the name of Jesus, the heavens shall open and pour out a blessing in this place. In the name of Jesus, may he clean this place and strengthen this place and do whatever he has to do in this territory. When you know your assignment, you can go there and you can begin to speak and activate and manifest the light in a place of darkness. That's when you carry the spirit of God, which is the light, his presence as well. And so it's not a time to be lit. It's a, it's a time to shine bright, be light. It's okay to separate yourself and do what you're called to do so you don't miss out on your assignment. Because a lot of times our assignments are for us too. They grow us. They groom us. They change us. They transform us. They transfigure us. When we're in that place in that glory cloud with the Lord, it, things happen to us. And then we begin to, we are able to then say, you know what? We can walk in places knowing that God has our back. But the other great thing about it is that people can then see the demonstrated power of God on your life when you are willing to go in places that make you uncomfortable knowing that you carry the light. You carry the light. It is within you. You are to declare and speak the light over your life. Listen, I like this scripture in Isaiah. So write it down when you get a chance. Isaiah 42. And just parts of it say in the first verse, it says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. There we go. We're talking about it. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. I'm going to keep going down a little bit more. I don't want to read the whole thing. By the time we get to verse 6, it says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you, a, give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison. Those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. That's in the scripture. Let me say it again because I like that. I love, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He got flag. Okay. It says, I am the Lord. That is my name. In other words, he said, I know who I am. I know what I can do. This is my name. Recognize it. Respect it. Because when I come around, darkness has got to go. And when you walk and you face the adversary, we're talking about spiritual darkness. We're not talking about being mean to people. Okay. When you walk and you can face those things, God stands strong. Something comes up in you and rises up. And you're able to declare the Lord is in this place. The Lord shall take control of this place. The Lord has dominion over this place. And the scripture says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And it goes on to say, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Those are idols. Those are idols. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a show on idols. I have to. Idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Are you saying that we get a glimpse of the great things that are gonna come for us? As long as we allow the Lord to be in control and allow his name to be heard so that he gets the glory, that is good news on tonight. It's the light of God. We don't deserve to be on our pulpit platforms. We don't deserve to have microphones in large stadiums. We don't deserve any of that. But God said, I need my people to go out to declare that I am Lord, declare my name, be the light 
so that those that are in darkness can be set free. We're not qualified, but our light is. We're not qualified, but our like is. That's the greater works. That's the greater works that the Lord does for us. He does great works. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And so when you come across a circumstance or a situation, the goal is to continue to speak, let there be light. Let there be light. The most simplest, easiest word, let there be light in your circumstance. Just think about one thing tonight before you go to bed. And I challenge you to speak over it and just say, let there be light. Let there be light. Let, let there be strength. Let there be the power of Jesus Christ to invade in that situation and bring life to it. It's just something about walking in that place of light. Light, again, has so much power and authority. Again, we talked about the Lord. Okay, so read the scripture. Go back and read what I read. We're, we're talking about what he does. In the beginning, he created his spirit hovered over something. You know, think about something you're going through and allow the spirit of God, speak it. Say, spirit of God, hover over this circumstance. Spirit of God, hover over me. Just cleanse my mind, Lord Jesus. Drain any toxic things from me. Toxic words from my past. Toxic situations, atmospheres, environments. Ask the Lord to hover over you. Ask him just to take dominion over your temple, over your vessel. And let there be light. Let the light in you not dim anymore, but shine bright. Begin to shine bright. God is looking for that. And he's looking for a people and people that are willing to not stay in the festival of lights. <laughs> That's my phrase for this revelation. But to be able to be set apart, to go out, to do what they're called to do to bring people to a place of freedom, to remove shackles, destroy yokes, change mindsets, speak healing to people, things that people want, speaking resources to their households, their lives, whatever it is, that's what God is looking for. He demonstrated, he just get, he, the way he sets up things in Genesis, sometimes we just gotta go back and be reminded of our responsibility and our obligation and just what he did in general and pray on it and allow God to give us our own revelation about it so we can continue to go forth in his word, in his word. That's the revelation that I pulled out of that. That's a different revelation that I pulled out of that scripture. It's not what I've had before. It's just something different. God does that. Sometimes he'll send you to the deeper things in, in his word and reveal certain things that need to be illuminated in this right now season. But I might read the same thing next year and something else will illuminate in that season. And that's why it's so important to understand that the light comes from your continual fellowship and prayer with the Lord and that thirst desire to be in worship with him. That's where reveals come. That's where the depth of things, the mysteries and the knowledge of who he is come about in those places. And that allows us to be strengthened, to be able to stand when we get into places of darkness. Remember, darkness cannot hold its position when light is around. It can't. It might fake it, it may flee, or it's going to come into agreement. I'll say that again. It might fake it, it might flee, or it's going to come into agreement. And so it's, it is important to understand the spirit that is an operation in your life and the life of those that are around you, being able to recognize it. And that is through your time with the Lord. And guess what? He's always going to say, and it was good because he loves it when his, his children seek after his face, face to face, when, when we want to go into his presence. And we just want to hear from him or to feel or experience him. And remember, you may be the only one that can do that for a territory God has called you to. Don't be afraid. His hand is upon you. Listen, that is my nugget for tonight here on The Triumphant Show with Charita Lovelace. I hope you receive something that you can just pray about, that you can share with somebody else, that you can just, you know, marinate on tonight before you go to sleep. I pray that the Lord just will intensify your dreams and your visions. I pray that he will show himself strong in your life. I pray where you have unbelief or uncertainty 
of who he is or the spirit of God, that God begins to show himself to you in ways you've never known in this new season. I pray that he gives you a marching order that as you go into the month of March, you will have a different mindset of understanding that you have a light that deserves to shine bright in this world in order to make another life come to life in order to bring peace to someone, in order to change their thinking, in order to bring love. Because guess what? That love and that joy is going to permeate back to you and it's just going to make you more loving and joyful. And it's going to help strengthen us and it's going to help break chains in all of us when we know we have the light. And I just pray that God intensifies that with you as you go into the next, in our next month, in March next week. And I pray that as you read his word, that you gain a greater understanding about who he is, the depth of the depth of who he is, and do not stop at this word. When you go through the Bible, I didn't have time, but when you go through the word of God, there is so much that talks about the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, light, darkness, every key word we've talked about tonight. There is a plethora of scripture that the Lord has given us. Read it. Go through it. If you don't know where, Google it. Pull it up so you can read it and understand all the attributes of God and who he is and how his spirit performs and how without the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon a thing, there is no life. Just like with the dry bones, Ezekiel with the dry bones. If there's no breath coming out, the spirit of God, the Ruach, it remains a dead thing. And guess what? Even if those bones raised up into that position, it still does not carry the power and the authority of the with the Ruach of the Holy Spirit that it should if it is not have the light of God. If it's just something that just raises up. You can raise up anything. You can create anything. But if it does not have the breath of God on it, the hand of God on it, the presence of God on it, I don't know how much life that has. Only what we do for Christ will last. And only what he does and gives us and what he ordains, he maintains. So it's so important to understand that there's so much more. There's so much more revelation. I pray to God tonight that you'll pull out those keys and you begin to walk in the light and just be reminded this week as you go through your job, wherever, just say, hey, everybody, Jesus is the light of the world. You see somebody arguing, say, Jesus is the light of the world. <laughs> or just say, let there be light. You walk into the ladies' room or the men's room and you see something going on crazy, somebody's on the phone having an argument, just be like, Jesus is light, light of the world, let there be light. <laughs> Begin to speak, let there be light on everything. Walk through your school, let there be light. Calm those kids down. Walk, walk through your neighborhood, let there be light. Uh, calm the people down. I don't know, you. there might be need, needs to be a change somewhere. Let there be light. Begin to speak it. Because the word is alive and it's sharper than a double-edged sword. And that means from beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation, it's alive. So what, what is spoken, it shall be. You just have to believe it. I always say that. You just have to believe it. All right. I'm really going to leave now because if I keep going, I'm going to go into idols. I really want to hit that. So stay with me over the next couple of weeks. I'll try to fit that in about idols and idol worship and what does idol idolatry look like. What does idol worship look like? And I'll bring one of my um, spiritual colleagues on with me so we can talk about it so you can re-examine things in your life so you can continue to clean up shop, clean up life so that as you're doing life with your family, your loved one, with ministry, whatever it is, that you're still in a place where you are you are trying to strive to worship God and to represent God the best way you know how. We all fall short, have fallen, fallen down and fallen short of the glory, but God is a God of grace and mercy. He gives that every day. It's a gift. So don't be discouraged. Don't beat yourself up. Just get up and keep going. I love you and I love you too. May you dream tonight. May you have visions. May they intensify. Just want to keep speaking that over you. And make sure you join me here next week, same time, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for the Triumphant Show. If you want to be a guest, please email me at charitalovelace at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook at Sharita Lovelace, Sharita Lovelace Ministries, Instagram, and Twitter, and so on YouTube once I get it together. Glory to God. Help me. All right. I love you all. Have a great Monday night. Have a great final week of February 2020, and I will see you in March. God bless you, and remember to be the light. Don't dim your light. Be the light. All right, see you soon.